1987, the Mountaineers rode in the front seat of a roller coaster called Emotion. It was a thrilling ride powered by triumph and despair. On one hand, there was the delight of a high-powered offense that lay coiled and ready to strike at any time. And on the other, the frustration of five losses by a total of only 15 points. Don Nealon, only one victory shy of becoming West Virginia's all-time winningest coach, said this was his most dedicated team in eight seasons at WVU. He built his squad on the back of a punishing, hard-nosed defense that refused to fold in the face of adversity. And he continued to build on the foundation of tradition that is West Virginia football. It was this sense of tradition, this sense of purpose and pride, that in 1987 triggered a return to glory. The 1987 football highlights are sponsored by Atlantic Financial with over 30 branches statewide. On a sweltering August day, Nealon and his charges took stock of the hand they had been dealt for 1987. Two-a-day practices are a time to exploit your strength and improve your weaknesses. There were questions to be answered about this 87 team. Could a redshirt freshman make the grade as a starting quarterback? Would the best core of running backs in West Virginia history stay healthy and productive? And could a strong but young defense stop the nationally ranked opponents it would face in the coming weeks? Only one man had the answer. Our football team returned in great shape physically. We ask our squad to lose approximately 10 to 15 pounds per man up front, and all of the guys reported in great shape. However, realistically, I knew that our tough early schedule might make it difficult for us to get off to the kind of start that we would like to. Many questions were answered on September 5th as the Mountaineers pounced on the Ohio University Bobcats in Morgantown. West Virginia displayed a potent rushing attack. Led by junior tailback Undra Johnson, the Mountaineers racked up nearly 300 yards on the ground. After battling off-season injuries, Junior A.B. Brown made his Mountaineer debut and battered the Bobcats with 70 yards, including a nine-yard touchdown run. But it was the heroics of Major Harris that left a collective smile on the faces at Mountaineer Field that day. The freshman sparkled on a 40-yard touchdown pass to senior co-captain Harvey Smith, and he displayed a shifty running style that defenses would come to dread. Senior co-captain Brad Hunt led the West Virginia stoppers with 11 tackles. Veteran defensive back Stacy Smith added nine hits and a quarterback sack. The next week, West Virginia invaded Columbus, Ohio for a battle with Big Ten power Ohio State. But upset hopes were smashed as WVU turned the ball over eight times on this dismal rainy afternoon. Buckeyes built a 17-point first quarter lead off the Mountaineer miscues, and that hole proved too deep for the old Golden Blue to climb out of. But the final score was not indicative of the game as a whole. The standing room only crowd left Ohio Stadium with a healthy respect for the West Virginia defense. Week number three seemed to have all the makings of an old-fashioned route, as West Virginia jumped on Maryland hot and heavy in Bird Stadium. Dale-back Eugene Napoleon shocked the Maryland crowd before they had even settled into their seats. Hundred Johnson, Eugene Napoleon are downfield, and here comes the kickoff to the near side of the field at the 6. Napoleon with the ball over the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30. He swings into the open. He's headed downfield, the 40, the 50. He's going to the Maryland 40. Plocky coming on an angle after he can't get him, the 20, the 10, the 5. It is a touchdown. 94 yards for the TD. Eugene Napoleon. Thousands of West Virginia fans were still celebrating when junior linebacker Robert Pickett intercepted the first Maryland pass and sprinted 26 yards for the second WVU touchdown in only 30 seconds. But the next 59 and a half minutes wove a tale of horror as the Terrapins clawed back to scratch out a five-point victory. 
The sensational running of A.B. Brown, who picked up 168 yards, bolstered a powerful WVU running attack. But the black cloud full of turnovers that found the Mountaineers at Ohio State slipped over the horizon again at Maryland as six WVU giveaways made the difference in College Park. I told our squad, gentlemen, there's no chance for us to win unless we get rid of the turnover ratio. Thank goodness they came through. They straightened up their mental attitude. In the last seven games, we did a good job. September 26th, Morgantown, West Virginia. 65,079 people sandwiched into Mountaineer Field. All bore witness to the act of war that is West Virginia Pitt. This chapter will be remembered as the best defensive battle in the 80-year epic that is called the Backyard Brawl. In the early going, it was the heroic efforts of linebackers Warren, Pickett, and Harry that led the Mountaineer charge. Their mission was to seek and destroy a tank called Ironhead. But it was Pitt who fired the first salvo with a 41-yard first quarter field goal. West Virginia marched right back. A Harris to Smith bomb recaptured 30 crucial yards of territory. Then Mountaineer ace Charlie Bauman blasted a 28-yard field goal through the uprights to tie the score at 3-all. In the second half, the assault continued as neither side could establish a foothold. The West Virginia defense looked nearly unbreakable as again and again it turned back every pit threat. But as the end grew near, it was that old nemesis, the turnover, that turned the tide of this battle. Pitt kicked the winning field goal after a drive that actually lost two yards. The three-point defeat was a bitter pill to swallow, but there were many bright spots on the day. This West Virginia team was set to explode, and the fuse was burning short. The defensive effort against Pitt was probably the best all year. It made our team come together and gel, and we exploded the next three weeks for some big wins. The fireworks started on October 3rd in Morgantown. The Mountaineer offense shifted into high gear, scoring 49 unanswered points in a route of East Carolina. The major was unstoppable, passing for 95 yards and two touchdowns. The first was a 31-yarder to junior Calvin Phillips. The second was a brilliant reception by senior co-captain Harvey Smith for a 22-yard score, his eighth TD catch in a brilliant career at West Virginia. Andre Johnson also had a big day, scoring on runs of four and nine yards. And the defense preserved its goose egg with the help of master blaster Bo Orlando. The junior safety picked off a pirate pass and scampered 84 record-setting yards for the touchdown. But the fun didn't stop here. Game six brought Cincinnati into town for a homecoming matchup they would rather forget. The Mountaineers churned out more than 550 yards of total offense and skinned the Bearcats 45 to 17. Major Harris set the slaughter in motion on the game's third play. Following some beautiful downfield blocking, Harris called his own number and jitterbugged 64 yards for the touchdown. West Virginia's longest run from scrimmage of the year. Hard-nosed Andre Johnson was there when the tough yard was needed. He picked up 118 of them and got his third touchdown in two weeks. The defense did a wonderful imitation of a brick wall, holding Cincinnati to only 60 yards rushing. The record now stood even at three and three, but with road games at Boston College, Penn State, and Syracuse, the stretch run would be long and hard. Well, yes, um, coming off the win against um, Cincinnati, um, we had the attitude going into the Boston College game that, um, you know, we was on a roll, we had the momentum in our favor, and we just knew that in order for us to keep winning that we just had to have a positive attitude. The next week, the Mountaineers boarded a plane and headed north for a little business trip. West Virginia was 6-1 and one against Boston College under Don Nealon. But the boss just loved the number seven, and his junior executives did not disappoint him. WVU scored early and often on the way to a 37-16 win. Junior Grantis Bell caught his first touchdown pass of the year on a 34-yard strike from the major. Versatile John Talley ran for two touchdowns on his only two carries of the day. 
and Charlie Bauman's stock shot up 100% as he was a perfect three for three. A.B. Brown led a blue chip backfield that netted almost 300 yards rushing. A bull market West Virginia defense charged through the BC line for nine sacks. This constant pressure helped account for two interceptions by a defense that would be ranked fifth in the nation against the pass. The Boston College takeover bid had been crushed and the boss had given his stockholders three wins in three weeks. Our kids knew what they had to do. We called this a business trip. Uh, we said we were going to get on a little old bus, go to Pittsburgh, get on a little old airplane, come here, have a good dinner, get up and have some eggs, get up, go play them, beat them, get back on our plane and go home. That was the game plan. West Virginia took the field at Penn State, looking like a hungry young challenger determined to give the aging champ the fight of his life. This game had all the makings of an upset. The defending national champion threw the first punch, but West Virginia fought right back. The key man was A.B. Brown, who would run for 50 yards in the first half. Major took it in for the score, and it was tied at 7-all. In the second round, the Mountaineer defense delivered a punishing combination. Senior free safety Terry White intercepted a pass to stop one Penn State drive, and junior tackle Chris Parker blasted in for a sack to stop another. The Lions grabbed a late field goal and staggered into the locker room, nursing a 10-7 halftime lead. In the third round, both fighters exchanged body shots, impressing the 85,000 judges packed into Beaver Stadium with their defensive tenacity. Near the end of the round, Chris Herring delivered an uppercut to the Lion offense as he picked off a throw and took it down to the 29. That set up a Harris to win right hook that gave West Virginia a four-point lead and left the champ clinging desperately to the ropes, waiting for the bell. In the final round, the young challenger smelling the upset charged across the ring and threw the first punch as Harris took the Lions by the tail and bolted 26 yards to midfield. Then he delivered the biggest shot of the fight, a 30-yard strike to John Talley. West Virginia 21, Penn State 10. But the aging champ, knowing that all its comfort and glory were now on the line, fought back like a caged animal. Penn State scored twice in eight minutes to escape with the victory. Um, our effort all in all I thought was, was good, but to play Penn State and, and beat them, you have to play uh, well all four quarters, and uh, we just didn't get it done at the end. West Virginia returned home to a smoke-filled Mountaineer field to tackle Virginia Tech in game nine. The smoke had drifted north from forest fires that were raging in the southern part of the state. However, the Mountaineers did some smoking of their own that day in a 28-16 win over Tech. A.B. Brown ignited Mountaineer fans with 169 yards. He led a cadre of WVU running backs that punished the Hokies for more than 300 yards on the ground. The WVU defense put the clamps on Tech, allowing only nine points in the last three quarters and allowed only 212 yards of total offense on the day. Any hopes of an upset bid by the Rutgers Scarlet Knights were quickly crushed in the Mountaineers' last home game. WVU scored nearly two dozen first half points en route to a 37-13 victory. Major Harris left fans across the Mountain State itching for 88 as he set a new Mountaineer field record with 304 yards of total offense. The way this youngster matured in 10 short weeks was simply incredible. By the end of that game, Harris and company had proven themselves to be able torchbearers of the flame of dedication that was passed from 10 seniors who had given their all to West Virginia University. These young men leave this institution with more than an education. They leave with a philosophy of how desire must equal sacrifice because success without pain does not taste as sweet. It is a law learned by years of experience inside this classroom. I came out of a small West Virginia town and I had many friends back there, but the friends that I've made on this team are people that you're gonna remember for the rest of your life, the guys that you uh, sweat and bleed with and lose and win and cry with and cheer with. So it's, it's really a very special feeling. Occasionally, a football game is played that raises the level of the sport to new dimensions. 
West Virginia at Syracuse was that kind of a contest. Many simply called it the best college football game of the year. West Virginia set out early to prove it had nothing to lose to the undefeated Orangemen. The stingy Mountaineer defense picked off three Syracuse passes in the first half alone. While on the other side, Major Harris unloaded on a 45-yard bomb to John Talley for one score. And junior Craig Taylor took a dive over the top for another to give West Virginia a four-point halftime lead. As the third quarter started, the WVU defense flexed its muscle a bit. Willie Edwards stopped a Syracuse drive with a fumble recovery. Then Terry White intercepted a Don McPherson toss at the goal line. The West Virginia offense settled down and burned up nearly nine minutes of clock. The 86-yard drive set up a Bauman field goal, and the WVU lead was now seven. The fourth quarter of this game was simply phenomenal. Both teams combined for 36 points in this period, and the stomach-churning finish would be remembered for years to come. Syracuse struck first to tie the score at 17. But West Virginia answered back with a major Harris score on its first possession. Then Syracuse, who had accepted a Sugar Bowl bid that very afternoon, tied the score 24 with five and a half minutes left. Andre Johnson, who had 119 second half yards, powered in from 10 to put the Mountaineers up by a touchdown, and time was running short. But the Orangemen proved their top five ranking was no fluke as All-American Don McPherson fired a TD pass in the closing seconds of the game. The two-point conversion gave Syracuse a one-point win. And the nationwide audience tuned in on ESPN was left wondering how a team as exciting as West Virginia had escaped national attention. But to one group, this game was no surprise at all. They knew all about this West Virginia squad. The fireworks in the Carrier Dome had merely confirmed their hunch. The group was the Sun Bowl Selection Committee. And although Don Nealon didn't know it yet, the Mountaineers would be spending Christmas in El Paso. After the Syracuse loss, when we lost in the last 10 seconds, I probably was as low as I've been for a long time. But it's a funny thing, when that phone rang Sunday morning, it jacked me up. We received a bid to the Sun Bowl to play Oklahoma State, and I felt our prayers had been answered. As soon as the Mountaineers arrived in sunny El Paso, there was no doubt that this would be a week to remember. The tradition of Texas hospitality is legendary, and it was enough to make this West Virginia squad dance with joy. The Mountaineers fine-tuned a game plan conceived in Morgantown and dedicated to the proposition that all teams are created equal. Despite their gaudy 9-2 record, these Oklahoma State Cowboys were a team that could be beaten. The pregame weather was beautiful in this sprawling Sun Belt City. While this Indian had his Braves ready to do battle, a swelling Mountaineer contingent got into the holiday spirit, and everything seemed right with the world. Uh, you know, this has been just a terrific trip for us, and uh, like Pat said, I have never met people like the folks in El Paso. You're just dynamite, and I want you to know that we're just privileged and proud to be here. It's just sensational. West Virginia took the field on Christmas Day to find the temperature in the low 30s and a wicked wind blowing from the east. But the Mountaineers had to find a way to warm up in a hurry as Oklahoma State scored quickly to take the early lead. A.B. Brown sparked a beautiful West Virginia drive, 80 yards, and it was a tie ball game. The Cowboys marched downfield on the broad back of All-American Thurman Thomas and grabbed a 14-7 lead. West Virginia retaliated with A.B. Brown, who scored his second touchdown of the day. Then the Mountaineer defense took over. Sophomore linebacker Rodney Wilson picked off a pass that set up a Bauman field goal. Linebacker Darnell Warren, the defensive player of the game, picked off another Cowboy pass and rumbled 23 yards into the end zone. West Virginia 24, Oklahoma State 14. The Cowboys came out fired up in the second half quickly shaved the WVU lead to three points. The Mountaineers blasted back in a 59-yard drive highlighted by a Harris to Bell connection. That set up a Bauman boot to give West Virginia a six-point lead. 
Oklahoma State answered the challenge with two scores. But this West Virginia team refused to quit. Major Harris, who rushed for more than 100 yards that day, marched WVU into scoring position. Craig Taylor crashed through from the six for the touchdown. But the Mountaineers were still down by two. Then a scrambling Major Harris hit Keith Wynn near the goal line. But the lanky tight end could not get across. And Oklahoma State snuck out of Texas with a 35 to 33 victory. Once again, the Mountaineers impressed a nationwide television audience with their desire to win. They turned this contest into perhaps the most exciting bowl game of the year. But now the thrilling ride was over. The final tally stood at six and six. But with only five starters lost from this 87 team, the journey in 88 could be electrifying. Reflecting on to the 1988 season, I see a football team that could be very strong. I see a team that's a definite top 20 contender. However, a lot of pieces have to fit. Offensively, our entire offensive line returns. Uh, we have the best backfield returning that we've had since I've been here. Major Harris is an outstanding quarterback. A.B. Brown is an exciting tailback. Uh, Craig Taylor came on strong as a fullback, so we could be outstanding on offense. Defensively, where you win championships and go to bowls, uh, we think we have a chance. Uh, we have some young kids that are going to have to prove themselves, but over the long haul, West Virginia always plays good defense. If the good Lord's willing, look for West Virginia to be right in the thick of things in 88. 1988 could be a year of unprecedented success at West Virginia. An entire core of running backs returns from a group that gained more yards rushing in a single season than any team in WVU history. They will run behind an offensive line that will return intact, ready to do war in their battle of the trenches. As always, the defense remains solid. It will be the watchdog of 1988, never letting opponents near the fortune of success that has become West Virginia football. The key to that fortune will be Major Harris. Sporting News called him the best freshman quarterback in the nation. But even more important to him, he was named most valuable player by his teammates for his incredible play in 1987. Mountaineer fans from Weirton to Welch will follow this team as they claim revenge for the close calls of 1987 and write a glorious new chapter of West Virginia football history in 1988. The 1987 football highlights have been sponsored by Atlantic Financial. With over 30 branches statewide, we can make a difference. This has been a Mountaineer Sports Network presentation.